Greetings everyone, my name is Studio Stephanie and I am so honored to be able to interview the Thomas T.J. Lofton. I've come to learn to know him and love him over the years because he is such a great inspiration as far as being an entrepreneur. He has definitely mentored me. I can definitely testify about that. But I'm really excited to be able to interview my mentor to the world because there is definitely something that you're going to take away after you finish looking at this interview. So, welcome Thomas T.J. Lofton or T.J. as we call him. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity <laughs> to share. Yes. I appreciate being your objector. <laughs> I really appreciate you being, <laughs> again, my mentor for all the things you've taught me as far as being a mentor, an uh, entrepreneur. And what's so great about you and your experience is that it doesn't matter what business you're involved in, it all has a basic foundation that you're able to see and help your clients along the way. And I think that's wonderful. But you're also a keynote speaker and you are a real estate guru. And um, just tell me more about who you are. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, I am a real estate guru and all those things. They gave me so many different names. Uh, basically, I just know a lot about real estate. So it started off at a very young age. I grew up in a community in Compton, California, and I had some uh, gentlemen who decided to build some strip malls, meaning uh, shopping centers. Uh, because of the gang violence, we would have young people who parents say go across the street and get some uh, swabs and ice cream from thrifties or you know, something like that. And then they would, uh, something bad would happen to them. So some gentlemen in my neighborhood growing up, they decided to buy like 10 pieces of land and build some shopping centers with everything, little mini market, barbershop, beauty salon, beauty supply, uh, one hour photo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all these things that we needed. So it was just a very rare opportunity that I was actually there to witness it from finding the idea, coming up with an idea to buy some land and determining which land and what should they build. So at nine years old, I got to witness all of that and watch this whole shopping center go up, you know, all the way down from what type of bricks should we pick to <laughs> should we hire a little pookie to work on the cash register? Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? So it was, I just got a lot of experience from everything, entrepreneurship, you know, should we use a, this uh, has a franchise, do we want to buy into that franchise or do we want to create our own? I'm like, franchise, like 11 years old, like franchise, what's that? You know, so it was very, I was very fortunate because I looked at the difference with watching something being built from the ground up versus I see now they're heavily promoting people to re, to flip, 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 yeah. come in and buy something old and rehab it and flip it and sell it and then you don't own anything versus where I come from, we were playing a long game. They were buying land building from the ground up and putting black businesses in there. So that was the model I was taught at 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way from the beginning. So that's why my conversation is so different than most people. Right. It's always about the long game to me. And and that's so important, and which leads me to my next question. Okay. Uh, you became an author. What inspired you to become an author? Outside of... Uh, my book coach is putting my back all the time. <laughs> you know, I would, since I'm an investor, I got a lot of people that I coach. And when I left California, I, when I was in California, I was in a little bubble, I guess. People from California who don't travel, we in a bubble where we think the whole world revolves around us. But we were, I was just in my little bitty bubble. And in that bubble, real estate was one way. It was buy an old house, rehab it, and fix it. Then we had, you know, we want a shopping center. You'd have to buy some dirt and build one. So when I started traveling the country, my uh, ancestor, Dr. Savy, told me, because I stopped, I was one, able to stop the uh, city from kicking the vendors out of Lamar Park because I was the president of the vendors. And 
But when I did that, you know, I met a gentleman by the name of Dr. Sabi. He told me no one had ever done that before. And he's actually, they put me on Al Jazeera's because of that. And Dr. Sabi saw it and he found out about me and he told oh. me, yeah, shout out to Dr. Sabi for yes. taking the time to say, I need to go meet that brother. <laughs> and this know? is all in the book. Yeah, yeah. I put it in the yes. book, you know. And he said, uh, what you did here in Los in Lamar Park, California, this is happening all over the country. You need to go teach people all over the country what you did to stop this because they're not so lucky. That's right. And don't give away all the goodies. No, no, Let no. <laughs> so so when I start traveling the country to see, you know, what Dr. Sabi was talking about, you know, all of a sudden, I got all these real estate investor friends of mine. They were like, well, what are you doing in Philadelphia? Which, by the way, that's on the cover of the book here. That's me in Philadelphia. Which is your latest book. <laughs> yeah, this is my latest book, the bestseller. Yes. You know, I had so many people buying the book, you know, num the number one book, Monetizing Gentrification, yes. Building Black Ownership. Yeah. So many people was buying this book. The moment it dropped, all of a sudden, a whole lot of new stuff popped out. And then I have, okay, this book is amazing, but now you got a whole bunch of people saying, well, what about this? And what about that? And I'm like, oh, they just came up with the opportunity zones. They just came up with the tariffs and the sanctions. And it's like, well, are you going to write another book? I'm like, I just wrote the first one. You know, they're like going crazy because it's like, you know, so here comes the second book, you know, the bestseller, you know, yes. the, the number one became a bestseller that made this one the bestseller. So I added on to it. Well, congratulations you know, again. Thank you. Look at this. And it's got color. <laughs> I, I oh, mean, full color. Yep. Yes, yes, full yes. color, revised and full color in wow. about 50 more pages, you know, than the first one. <laughs> wow. And just going in, you know, most people like, so how it what came to be for me to write the book was my friends would always ask me, well, what's going on in Philly? What's going on in D.C.? You always in D.C. What's going on in Atlanta that you always in Atlanta? I'm like, the real estate is amazing out here. I'm going to North Carolina, and when I leave here, I'm going to South Carolina. What is going on in those states on the east that you yeah. are messing around, investing in all those states, and you're not out here investing in California? I'm like, well, they're doing this. They're doing that. And they're like, can you send me a picture of that? I can't because they didn't believe it. No. They're like, ain't no way they're, they're doing that. So, like she said, y'all got to buy the book to see what I'm talking about. But, so that's why you travel to so, so many states? Yeah, I was I was just actually, I was just so amazed. Oh, wow. I was just like a little kid in a candy store. I'm like, <laughs> I've never seen these kind of investments. People aren't just buying houses and, and fixing them up and, and flipping them and all of that. They were building brand new highways. They were building brand new shopping centers, malls. Whole cities were being built. And I'm, I'm telling my friends, they, we, they've never seen this. It's just like I've never seen it. So they're like, can you send me a picture of that? Take a picture and send it to me. <laughs> so I start sending all these pictures. And before I know it, I got like hundreds of pictures. Wow. And then I'm like, you should just put all that in the book. Right. And I'm sense. like, good idea. Thank you. <laughs> my coach said, I said, put it all in the book and, and write it, you know. And here, this is the book, you know. And how can people <clears throat> uh, get a book? Because it's so important. I've learned so much out of that book. I'm serious. I can testify that it's so important. I was just always just depending on the real estate agent to tell me everything I needed to know. But oh, now I'm able to think I for myself. That. So thank you. I appreciate that. You know, because, well, first of all, you go to my website, only on my website, not on Amazon, okay. tjlofton.com, tjlofton, L-O-F-T-I-N.com tjlofton.com only on my website and you can order both of the books you know nice. so I lost my thought <laughs> <laughs> but yeah both of the books is on my website that you can order uh, the first one is 35 on the book on the uh, website to your door the second one is 49 to your door because this is full color you know okay. it's affordable this is keep in mind family this is probably you know, thousands of dollars worth of game. I'm talking about 35 plus years of straight up game, you know, things that people don't talk about. This book has made me lose a lot of friends and it made me some enemies with people I don't even know, <laughs> you know, <Wow. laughs> you know, especially real estate agents and city officials because they're like, 
why are you talking about that? We don't want people talking about that. Real estate agents was like, that's 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 our fiduciary duty. You're not supposed to be talk, telling people that. I'm like, well, the people are being hurt by these actions that you guys are taking. And that's one of the main reasons why I wrote the book. So it's not just the pictures of what's happening in the cities. It's also what's going on with the foreclosures. Why are they taking black people's homes? And how are they taking them most importantly? And what can be done to stop them from taking them? So that's what I put in the book. So a lot of, they got things called redlining going on. And through redlining, they're taking people's houses. They're they're locking us out of certain neighborhoods, telling people we don't qualify to live in this used to be black neighborhood because they're going to redline it. So they're gentrifying it now. So they'll tell people you don't qualify. And and that's really great that you give this book so much useful information. Mm -hmm. But what about those that want more information? You offer training mm -hmm. courses. Is yes. that correct? Yes, because you know, some people just need you to hold their hand. And it's like, there's so many questions that I didn't cover in the book because this didn't happen yesterday. It's just so many people going through so many different things. What's going on in Tennessee is not going on in California. And what's going on in Las Vegas is not happening in New York. So every day somebody tells me something new about something happening in Miami. So I'm like, but I have a solution for that. And next thing you know, it's not in the book because who known that we need to go that deep about Miami. All of a sudden, uh, I have to do coaching. You know, I do consultations. Somebody called me up. They want to do a one hour consultation because some people say, I just want to pick your brain. I have five questions I really need you to answer right. for me. I know you know. I'm like, yeah, I probably do. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was with you a couple of times when you oh, had people okay. asking you. Yeah, it's just, man, it's like that. they see me in the airport and be like, oh, I got a question for you. I'd be like, hi, I'm TJ. You know what I'm saying? They go, I know who you are, but I want to ask you a question. I'd be like, uh, well, you go to my website. And, right. But, you know, but the reason being, people are really going through some stuff around the country, y'all. They really going through. It's nothing, it's nothing to laugh at. Like, we sitting there laughing. It's not really serious. Yeah. It's not that funny. But it's people really going through some stuff. And they know that I know solutions and strategies about the things that they're going through. Because I, for the most part, when I meet people, I hear all the time, I wish I would have knew you last year. I wish I would have known you last yesterday before I sold my house or something. So, you know, a training course helps people to make good decisions. It teaches them what to ask for before you walk into that room. You know? Wonderful. And and you not only teach individuals, you also are an advisor to schools as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I became an advisor to schools because of my background. I was able to foresee what was going down the pipe, coming down the pipeline. You know, I have a background in, I'm a celebrity car builder by trade, retired, and I've endeavored into a lot of real estate. So when I would meet school teachers and things like that, I'm like, okay, well, what are you teaching the kids that they're going to be able to buy a half a million dollar house? They're like, what? What are you talking about? Half a million? I'm like, yeah, the real estate prices are rising. So by asking all these questions, they were like, can you come advise us? Because, you know, these people are the people that run the schools. They're not talking. They're not having this conversation. Their main focus in life is to make everybody go to college. So now here I am talking about the cost of living, the cost of uh, 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 wages that the children will be making at this job, that job. They're not talking about those things. They're just concerned about get them in college, get them a degree, and they'll be great. Well, I'm like, no. If they ain't making $125,000 a year or better, they don't qualify to purchase a home. And if they don't qualify to purchase a home, then that's going to put them in alignment to be gentrified. And they will be moving and moving and continue to be moving. And some of them end up homeless in homes. Which also leads me to my next question. Okay. You have a TJ Toolbox. Tell me more about that. You know, I like the TJ's Toolbox. That's for the youth because... Like I said, I started off at nine years old and shout out to Putin, rest in peace, who took the time out to answer all those thousand questions that a nine year old had. You know, what's the what's the strip mall? What's the piece of land? What's the what's the franchise? You know, what's the, what is that? What is this? And what is and he was like, they would sit there and answer all of these questions. He was like, you really interested in this stuff, you know, and I appreciated that because what if he would have just shut me down? Boy, you too young. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go play a video game or something. You know, it wasn't no video game back then. But no, it had a target. But he took the time out 
and said, TJ, we're going to build some shopping centers because of the gang violence, because of this. We're going to bring black businesses to our community because we can't depend on other people to do that for us. And I was like, wow, at nine years old, I'm being programmed. We must have black businesses. We have to do it ourselves because no one else is going to do it for us. Okay, I got you. Can't, you can't teach me nothing else because that was programmed and embedded in my brain at nine years old. <laughs> Must do for self. Make sure they saw a problem. He didn't get shot. His buddy didn't get shot. But they decided we have the solution, the money, to make a difference to help other people. We're going to help them. So let's, let's pull our money together and buy a shopping center, some land, and build a shopping center. And they determined, okay, we need a beauty salon, a beauty supply. We need a barbershop. We need all of these things. They, they sit back and decide. And I'm like, wow, we can do that? We can do I'm like 9, 10, 11 years. We can do that? We can name it after what we want to name it? Like the, the TJ Shopping Center? I was like, I know. wow. I was, I was blown away. I'm like, So now when I'm getting older, I'm just like, what are y'all talking about? Why aren't y'all doing this? And why aren't y'all doing that? So I've come to find out years later that I have a skill set that most people that don't have that look like us. You know, some, something, when people say to me all the time, say, you sound like a white man or something. I'm like, what? Like, why do I sound like a white man? Because this conversation you're having is not common in the community. We flip houses. You over there talking about sitting and holding and shop building from the ground up. I was like, wow. Okay, so that's why I teach. That's why <laughs> That's why I became an advisor to the Compass School District because I'm well-versed. I had a, a real estate license. I had a mortgage broker license. I had and also had a I built houses from the ground up. So I used to own a company doing mortgage life, mortgage uh, loans as well as selling houses. So now I'm very well versed and I can see the big picture of what's going on. And that way I know the numbers. I said, you can't come in my office with a $100,000 in student loan debt on your credit report thinking you're going to qualify for a half a million dollar home. So I was able to go into schools and explain that to them. And they said they never heard that. Mm -hmm. No one had ever said that in their last 50 years or 100 years of being here. I'm like, wow. whoa. Wow. And then I, I recall that you have a manufacturing uh, webinar. And mm -hmm. what does that teach people? You know, I created the manufacturing webinar because I knew back in the days when, when Donald Trump said, he's going to put sanctions on China. Well, China's the biggest manufacturer on the planet. And because I have a an a, a entrepreneurship brain set and I manufacture car parts from my old industry, I understood how that was going to affect the uh, automotive industry. I understood what sanctions would mean to America. To me, if you're going to stop the biggest supplier of, auto, of, of, anything, of everything from auto parts to uh, books and pens and pencils, everything's going to skyrocket. So when they put sanctions on them, I knew that that would give the opportunity for America to start back developing brand new everything, to so start manufacturing situations here in America. So I, I created a, DB, a, a USB, a webinar. I created a webinar so I can help people because a lot of people think you have to be a millionaire or billionaire to manufacture things, which is not true at all. So it's just I just wanted to help. So I created to make things easier. We shouldn't have to recreate the wheel if someone had already done that before. <laughs> and that's what I really appreciate about oh, you. You keep you, your you. ear to the ground. You, you're always researching so you can give that information back to the community. And that is just yeah. so resourceful and so um, thankful. I, I really appreciate you doing that. Well, and, and so with your consultations, what yeah. kind of services do you offer? I offer training courses, I offer consultations, I also offer uh, everything. People put me on planes to fly across the country to help them build their house from the ground up. People have me pretend to be their husband. We have a large number of single black women that are raising children that are purchasing homes. There are more single black women purchasing homes than married couples. So I have a large... So for some weird reason, contractors t tend to treat your sisters bad. They don't They don't have respect for a sister with a very nice house that wants someone to come over and help her with a construction project. 
They just look, where's your husband? Oh, she don't have one. Oh, they want to charge more money. They want to lie. They want to give her a hard time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I literally have people have me, oh, I'm going to have my husband, her husband call, and that would be me. You know, I'm the husband, okay? And I would just, oh, things will go smoother, or I'll, I'll drive out there, and I will meet the contractor. So, you know, I, I had to create a special package for that so that I can help single women get things done. And the reason why they're willing to pay me to do that is because a project may be an extra $50,000 without a man on board. I hate to admit that, you know, they may, they'll have contracts will have you paying to do something that you don't need mm -hmm. and you lose money like that and i can really believe that because mm -hmm. i know the statistics when it comes to women mm -hmm. with getting their cars repaired without having the man so, there that's so, another one yeah. yeah so i definitely understand yeah we should it's just terrible the things that they do to women you know yeah. and that's why i'm here to help you so, know well how can we contact you what's your telephone number you can Oh, sound like you're with me. Ask me for my number. No, I'm just kidding. You can call me, reach out to me at area code 310-619-3954. Again, 310-619-3954. Or go to my website, tjlofton.com. Or inbox me on one of my social media platforms. Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, you know, everybody except for Twitter or something. <laughs> Twitter. Uh, Twitter, yeah. Uh, Thomas T.J. Lofton, Clubhouse. Thomas T.J. Lofton, that's what an I in on the end. Or you can go to my website at tjlofton.com, you know, and send me a message. But, yeah, please reach out to me because I think that everyone, you know, it for one hour, I always try to encourage people, a one-hour consultation could save you thousands of dollars. Does that make sense, family? A one-hour consultation of a very minimal amount of money can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars at, in today's time at this cost of living. I saved someone $150,000 the other day. Wow. By the way, and I got a card for it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a thank you card, y'all. <laughs> oh, how nice. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like people to know before we close out? Um. Because of what's going on in the economy, family, uh, we are turning back into an industrial country. So it's no longer about the four-year degree anymore. It's about the, the trades. It's about the working with your hands. Because like I said, when manufacturing coming back, because of the sanctions and the tariffs that's going on all on, on all the countries around the world, China's being ran out of business and America is retooling itself to start manufacturing things. So just like back in the days when they were doing uh, General Motors had the assembly line and people would come right out of high school and go get a job working on an assembly line, we're headed back in those days. So it will behoove you to have your child, instead of going to college to get a four-year degree, how about we start going back into the schools, like I'm an advisor to the school districts, and we start explaining to them what's about to happen, what's happening and what the white schools are doing, they're putting the trades back into schools. They're not encouraging four years of college anymore. So we should start going to all those meetings and let them know not what we want them to do. This is what we expect you to do. We pay you guys and we want you to educate our youth on things that are currently in the market to where our children can get a living wage because over 95% of our college graduates, specifically the HBCUs, are unemployed or underemployed, meaning they're coming home with a two, three hundred thousand dollars in student loans, but the job they got pays 40 working at a nonprofit. So they will never ever pay that two to three hundred thousand dollars off, making forty thousand dollars and paying this high rents that are here and trying to purchase a home. It just won't add up, they won't make it. Well, well, as you see, he is just so resourceful and I love it. And just take advantage of all of his information that he has. Contact him. Again, it's Thomas T.J. Lofton. That's T-H-O-M-A-S-T-J Lofton, L-O-F-T-I-N. You can purchase one or two books. It has questions in there. I mean, it's just so much information. And then if you need more information, take advantage of his consultations, his online course. Uh, he's available. And again, is there something else you want to say? Yeah, I also <laughs> wanted to say we, we 
kind of made this into a workbook because a lot of homeschools around the world yeah. are using this book for children. And that almost put a, that put a tear in my eye when they told me what they were doing with my book. I was like, oh, oh. really? <laughs> yes, it's, like, so, it's so needed in the schools. Yeah, it yes, is. definitely. So thank you all for tuning in. Again, this is Mini Studio Stephanie, your self-care specialist that focuses on your wealth and wellness. And thank you for helping us with our wealth. Thank you for the opportunity to share. <laughs> all right. Take care.